So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever you're listening to this. This is Matt Bailey alongside E. Smithy of the Mighty Soul Powers. Yes, yes. And this is a special retrospect review uh, because, you know, we're, we're actually going to be talking about, you know, two, two grown men are actually going to be talking about <laughs> a really, really dope and very influential, in my opinion, um, R&B album, or I should say Neo Soul album, by the name of Baduism, right? This is the debut project from Erica Badu. It was released on February the 11th, 1997. So, yeah, we basically are celebrating its uh, 25th anniversary. So good. So yeah. good. So oh. as as we normally do, you know, I mean, as you know, just just you know, using the, the the word retrospect, right? It's not just about us, you know, just you know, talking about the album and what we love and whatnot. Um, it's also about how we got into this album in the first place, right? Um, where we were when we first heard um, Erica Badu, how how long it took for me in particular to listen to this album. Mm. And yeah, just just you know this this new world of of dope music that I was I was introduced to, to um true true Erica right, uh yeah. so uh, you know allow me to kick things off right so um Erica Badu I mean great you know um singer songwriter you know what I mean um, and occasional okay, actress as well too, but you know for me what 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 really um what 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 really draws me to her is her voice she has a very um you know i'm i'm just using this this tune for now she has a very um vintage you know voice you know what i mean like like if there weren't any um you know modern production behind her you would swear that you were listening to some record from like the 30s and 40s she just has that that rich old time you know um vocals right and vocal yeah. delivery as well too um yeah. and it, it just worked you know it, it totally worked it wasn't you know like not, not saying that nobody else did it before her, but I, you know, at the time in the nineties, um, especially with like mainstream music, I, I never heard a voice like this before in my life, right? So I imagine mm-hmm. this is the same thing for you, um, E. Uh, my, my introduction to her came in the form of the track "On and On," right, which is part of oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I never forget um, how you know just how different it sounded, right? Um, from from the music to the way how she sang to what she was talking about. It, it just didn't sound like anything that I ever heard of before. Um, it's very bohemian, right? It's very artsy, but, you know, in, in a great way as well, too. You know what I mean? And I'll actually make the argument that, you know, Erica's the type of person that, you know, if you just spend an hour just talking with her, you, you would just learn so much about yourself, right? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? She just sounds so, you know, educated, you know what I mean? So knowledgeable about life and, you know, just different perspectives on it and whatnot, right? So, yeah. Um, so, On and On was my introduction to her. Um, so, you know, there were, there were a few other songs from her as well, too. Um, but, you know, at the time, I, I j- did not even, you know, jump in, dive into the discography, right? So it's only like, I believe it was in the 2000s. I can't remember when exactly that I really jumped in, into her work, right? So I finally listened to Bad Wisdom. I finally listened, I listened to Life, which is a, I would say, a complimentary album to Bad Wisdom. It's a live performance of her um, it's a live album, basically, but just her basically doing a lot of cuts from uh, Baduism. And of course, there's the song Tyrone, which still remains one of my all-time favorite yeah. songs, regardless of genre, right? I love, love, love that song, right? Especially that yeah. end, that that end, but you can't yeah. use my phone. Ooh, I love that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, I have to thank BT as well, too, for, you know, for for always telling me what, uh, for showing me, sorry, what, what Erica is up to, right? So mm-hmm. case in point, there was um, Love of My Life and Ode to Hip Hop, which was all over BT, right? This was from the Brown Sugar movie soundtrack. Um, this is with who and uh, Common, right? And speaking of Common, uh-huh. um, <laughs> we, you know, I'll just mention briefly, but um, yeah, Erica has a history with, with Deaton rappers, right? So first of all, she started off with, uh, with Andrew T- um, 3000 of Outcast, right? And, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. at the time of the albums of Bad Reasons release, you know, she was about to give birth to her um, son, I believe it is, right? Seven, right? Um, seven, I, I, yeah, yeah I, I really should look up and see where where is seven though, you know. Um, but uh, it, well, I, I'll say but, real quick. Um, uh-huh. the last I heard, the last I heard that uh, seven was actually um, uh, pursuing music. Oh, that that makes sense. That makes absolute yeah. sense. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm around up though, right? So that's just moving quickly, right? Um, but yeah, thank, thanks to BT, I, I, you know, just saw like her. her you know, her hits her, basically, because not all the time, especially like in Trinidad, um, would I hear um, her new tracks, right? Um, so, you know, there was Love of My Life, that was big. 
um, Baglidi. That was huge. And you know what, what, what made it even great is that she was flowing off of um, Dr. Dre's explosive beat, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I pretty much, you know, put that song in the mainstream because uh, if you listen to the lyrics of explosive, it's like, yeah, that, that, that's, that's not, that's not uh, radio centric at all, right? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, you know, so, you know, um, there was, um, well, through those those music videos that aired on BT, you know, I mean, I I would you know seek out um you know her albums like Mama's Gun, uh, Will White on the Ground, um, New America Part One, New America Part Two, um that 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 latter album in particular had you know the track uh, Window Seat, which was uh, quite controversial, you know the music mm-hmm. video and you know what she did in that, you know you, you well you know when you, you know just just check the video out and you understand what we mean right, um yeah. but yeah you know I mean other than that though you know I just um you know. Just all, I'm, 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 I'm always looking forward to, you know, seeing if she, if she puts out anything new. Um, I, I, I highly doubt that, you know, I mean, given where she is in life, because she's like what fifty years old, right? Um, but you know, maybe she could do like a little comeback album or something like that, right? And, and last thing, last though, what, what, what I just really want to mention here before we get to your thoughts, e, is how she helped, you know, spearhead um, the new soul movement, right? Um, through the, the group, um, soul, soul Quarian, sorry, right? Uh, which was a group that I, I found out after the fact, right? Um, so, you know, it, it, it featured D'Angelo, right? Um, you know, the roots and whatnot, right? And of course, Common, right? But I would say, and I'll wrap up here, this was, this this movement, I was just say, you know, this new soul movement. Also, by the way, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think Erica kind of dismisses that term. She doesn't like that term, new soul, because essentially to her, it's new, it's, it's soul music that she's doing, but you know, when mm-hmm. you say new soul, it, it's, you know, these really moody nocturnal beats that, you know, I am a huge fan of, right? But yeah, that, that for me was 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 my introduction to um, to new soul as well, right? So I would eventually seek out the roots, um, D'Angelo and, you know, Common as well, right? I mean, all, all three are some of my favorite artists working in music today, right? And I'm a sub there, right? So, uh, E, how did you get introduced to, 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 to Erica um, and Baduism and, you know, just how you felt about her, her music going forward? With with Erica for me, um, with Erica for me, it was like uh, definitely on and on. When I when I heard that when I heard that it was like the bounce the bounce of it the 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 production. Um, I think I need a cup of tea. The world keeps burning. The first thing that hit me was like, wow, this is somebody who sounds like um, Billie Holiday, and. They sounded like Billie Holiday in a um in a in a in a in a hip hop in a hip hop realm. Yes, yes. You know, in a hip hop so first and foremost in a hip hop realm. And the thing that um that attracted to me attracted me to her. And I and I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not like um, I mean, everybody knows by duism. But I'm not, you know, the way that I consume music, it's not that I don't, um, it's only, it's really, to be honest, I listen to a lot of music, but it's only a very, very few that I can say that I listen to every album. Um, Erica with with Baduism was like, (laughs) it was like, it, it, it resonated so much to the point because I'm not I'm not like a stickler to where I have to be like this is th- is it's supposed to be this way it's supposed to be that way and I'm just judging and I'm debating but when she did her thing and with that voice just like you said with that voice sounding like Billie Holiday it did it didn't make me say get the fuck out of here it it it, it didn't make me say that you know what I'm saying it was <laughs> it was it was definitely some uh, uh, authentication with 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 what she was doing. Now, as I learned more and more about her, you like you say, Mama's Gun, and you know the other other stuff that she did. It was like, wow, wow, like she really, she really, she really does this. So, getting back to what we said, on and on. That's one of the first songs. That's like probably the first song that I heard from her. You know, and then um, see see you see you next lifetime. It was yes. just like mm. yeah, it was, it was like wow, like this this lady, this lady has a, 
and I and I'm gonna be honest, like I said, I was I was into other things, but you cannot you cannot look over her. You cannot look over her. Erica Badu was a one of one of one then and still a one of one now. You know what I'm saying? So Agreed. I was yeah. yeah, I was I was turned on to her um by some way of being in some club, probably in North Carolina, um, North Carolina or or Atlanta. And I heard um, on and on, and it was like, okay, okay. And like I say, honestly, to be honest, I was like, the 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 um, Billy Holiday references threw me off for like a split second. It threw me off because I'm like, mm. and then I was like, oh no, she 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 really she like she. It wasn't like she was copying. She was like. She she learned from Billy and then created her own thing. And, that, and as we go in with this retrospective, if I will go even more about, you know, her musical influences. So that's 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 my part. Right. And I, I would appreciate it, you know, really appreciate if you, if you bring up more of, you know, because like in my case, I wouldn't be thinking about musical influences. Right. But, you know, with you, with your knowledge of music, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's doing Billy Holiday. Right. Or she's doing this. So she's doing that. Right. So yeah. appreciation in advance. Right. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> let's let me say in time, let's jump into bad wisdom. Right. So, uh, you know, you know, get 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 a glass of uh, uh, scotch or wine or whatever it is, and you just, <laughs> yeah. just lay back and chill. You know what I mean? Yes, I, yes. I have to bring this up because you know this this is the way. You know, even though I don't do this while I'm listening to music, but I don't know for something like this, uh, is is that kind of album where you could just sort of you know turn the lights off, have a drink in hand, and just yes, just, just vibe to this album. That that's what I love about it, right? Yes, and, um, smoke, smoke some. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and speaking yeah. of that, speaking of that, um, even the title itself, because there's a, a famous interview, you have to do some digging on YouTube to find it. Uh, basically, the title, what, what it means is just basically, you know, um, it's it's music that is designed to get you high, right? You're, you're, you're getting high through Badu's music, through Badu's ism, right? Or weed, right? So, yeah, 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 yeah. that's that's why it's called Baduism. Yeah, 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 it's intentionally yeah. designed for you to just be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it take it, it. You know what? You know what, Matt, Matt, that that makes so much sense. It's like it, it literally because this morning I was revisiting it while I was working, and literally, that's what it does. It's like from a music lover's um, perspective, you can listen to that, and it can take you through so many different rides and ups downs up down up down and then it just it, and then it levels you out it's yeah yeah that's baduism <laughs> yeah baduism indeed, right? yeah so uh let's let's kick things off with uh in, with the intro track um rim shot right Rimshot. Um, for, for me this is one of the best mood setters and album i've ever heard I love the nocturnal grooves for this, um, especially, the, you know, the guitars, keyboards, and snares, you know what I mean? Um, the hook is infectious that I need a rim shot. Yeah, you know what I mean? Love that, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it just, you know, perfectly just sets the stage as to what to expect with her style and sound on this album. Um, anything you want to weigh in on, you know, rim shot, the intro? Um, for me, for me, for me, rim shot, rim shot let me know off top that during during that time of R and B and soul, she she came out the gate straight up letting you know like this is this is not no cookie cutter type R and B soul. This is um we're 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 doing something different, old and new at the same time. That's what I got from it. Yeah, yeah, indeed, and and also too, you could you could tell that there's a lot of um. There's a lot of studio chemistry involved, right? Because, um, yes. well, also, you know, the Roots actually make a couple of appearances on this album, right? It could kind of just feel a sense of, like, you know, yeah, we just work it together. We just build a vibe, you know what I mean? We, yeah, we're coming yeah, up with, like, yeah, these dope yeah. sounds and, you know, vocals and whatnot. And this is what yes. we're going to present to you here, right? Uh, so yes. the second track is, well, on and on, right? Um, you know, mm-hmm. our, it, our official introduction to Miss Badu, right? Um, yes. For me, when I was young, you know what I mean? Because um, I didn't really quite understand the song back then. Uh, I just always loved the, the cadences, right? You know, um, especially yes. when she's doing that. You know what I mean? Like, 
it yeah, just always yeah. stood out to me when I was young. You know what I mean? Now, even Very though much I wasn't so. sure Very what she was talking about, right? But you know, it's really years yeah. into that I get what she's what she's doing here, right? So yeah. it just it, what what for me how I see it is that um this this kind of gives us a glimpse into her thought process, right? You know, she's talking about yeah. how she feels. You know what I mean? Oh my my my, I'm feeling high. Uh, mm-hmm. What she has to do deal with in real life. You know, my money's gone. I'm all alone. Um, and thinking about you know these life lessons that you know she either like learned on her own or like somebody taught her, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she even like talks about what she's doing while she's thinking these things, right? I think I need a cup of tea, right? You know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the it's only years keeps later. Turning. Yeah, the world keeps turning, right? It's only years <laughs> later that I found out that she incorporated some um some five percent uh, um knowledge. Oh right? yes, yes, vows, right? yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Especially yes. that you know, if we were made in His image, then call us by our names. Most intellects do not believe in God, but the fear is just the same. That's the same. Yeah, those, yeah. those bars always stood to me, even though I, would, I oh even though back God. then in '97 I was just like, "What? This was this oh song? song what? Yeah. You know? Oh my God! Yeah. yeah. So yes, for me, yes. you know, back back then, you know, half the stuff that she talked about flew past my head. But then again, you know, it was in '90s, right? So there was a lot of lyrical and artistic experimentation. Mm-hmm. You know, me when it mm-hmm. came to mainstream music, right? Like remember, it's in '90s, right? There were a lot of people who were just putting out all these like different unique songs right but with badu it just sounded different right and, and you know it just felt so it was artsy but at the same time it was cool it was chill you know what yeah I mean? it, 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 it's almost like she's just having this casual conversation with you you know what i mean um and yeah i mean not much more i could say well i should say one last thing uh the music video for this still holds up though <laughs> especially the the color purple inspired you know narrative mm-hmm. that goes on it as well too um but yeah i mean that this the, the song is, is is a classic in my opinion i love this track so yeah yeah uh, any yeah. thoughts on on and on yeah definitely um when i when i when i was writing my notes about this i wrote down like um word for word i said on and on is is a true musical definition of dropping a jewel on you Effort, effortlessly. That's what she did with that. She um and and, and it's funny that you say that you talk about um uh, five five percenters. When I when I was listening to it again this morning, I was like, you know, what she was saying, like, you know, um, he was made in he was we are made in his image and you know, all that 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 like really deep stuff. Um, around the time when I, around it, well, actually it was past that time. I started gaining, gaining like knowledge of self for myself around about the age of 17. And it wasn't like, you know, I never, never went to prison, nothing like that, but it was like, I started gaining knowledge of self through hip hop. And when she said those things, it was like, okay, okay. And you listen but that that was one of the first things that I thought about this morning. Like, okay, when she said that, and the um, was that um, I was um, I was born on the water with three dollars and six dimes. It's like I said, wow, okay, she she talking some five percent stuff, yes, and you yes. actually, and you and you actually, yeah, and and, and I and, and I'm a, I'm not gonna be the one to say, oh, I know all this stuff. I got any type of five percent references. Which I think is great to me. I got from hip hop. I got it from Nas. I got it from Most Def. I got it from Talib Kweli. I got it from Ghostface. I got it from Wu Tang. Period. But um, to me, that song right there was the true meaning of dropping a jewel on you effortlessly, and some way, like it, it was like it, it, it just is seeped into your soul knowingly and unknowingly like you said you you was a kid and you it went over your head but now he's like you can put my shout out my man you know you know my man mrksx yes he, yes he, yes yeah he he hit he hit me up uh a week or so ago and was saying like yo bro i'm listening to erica's um now i want to say it was by doism but he was saying no he was talking about on and on he was like yo she was dropping so much stuff in there and now here, here we are talking about it so yeah yeah <laughs> i know right yeah, yeah man yeah man <laughs> yeah. On, on, on and on right you know me my cypher on and on brother on and on yeah 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 
Right. So next track we have is Apple Tree, right? And for me, you know, the decision to have this track come after Apple Tree is brilliant, right? Um, I think that you know these, you know, this this for me felt, you know, feel sorry, and um, like 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 a B side, right? You know, like this is the B side to to on and on, right? And you know, it, I, I really love how they both kind of complement each other, right? Um, mm-hmm. To the point that you know she even references on and on, right? You know, she does the oh my my my, she does the on and on. My cipher keeps moving like a rolling stone on the second yes. verse, you know. What I mean? But I like the the you know the the, the concept of this track here because she's talking about how you know she she has a particular crowd that she rules with, you know, her artsy friends, but you know, she picks her friends like she picks her fruit, right? Um and you know, she she's always trying to be real and righteous without coming across as some someone she's not, right? And she pretty much lets you know the hook that if you're not down with her, then you don't want to pick from an apple tree, right? Which I love that. That 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 chorus though is one of the most catchiest that you will hear on this album, right? Um, yes. and yeah, I I absolutely love this track here. Um, it, it, it's so great though that I don't know, like if, if if you were to ask me which I do do I prefer on and on or apple tree, um, I I would pick on and on though. But but apple tree for me though has this particularly moody, rainy like vibe to it especially with that with the instrumental there's, there's something kind of you know rainy about it if, if it makes sense though, like just the, the the um the vibe that it establishes on that track though but yeah absolutely love apple tree um any thoughts on that on that track apple tree for me apple tree for me was um and I, I I found I found out about it you know definitely from like interviews and stuff apple tree to me made me see when when she talked about her you know because erica erica actually started out as an mc okay that that explains her yeah yeah yeah, yeah she, she, you know yeah. why she oftentimes does rapping okay okay yeah 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 she started she started out as an mc and i'm pretty sure she knew she knew how to rhyme and everything but she started out as an mc and when i heard that it made me truly understand her um, her MC roots, and then from there you can see her MC roots throughout throughout her um, her her album and her albums and her 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 career. She she's a she's an MC. You know she she actually she actually does concerts where she actually makes a beat on stage. You know live. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 song, the Apple Tree, made me see here like, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, you 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 you're an MC at heart. You know, that's what I got from. It. Okay. 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 All right. Next track we have is Other Side of the Game, right? And for me, if if one were to do a top ten or you know top five best Badu songs, um, this this has to be on your list, right? Um, okay. It is the longest song on this album here, but you get your 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 times with, with it, right? Um, mm-hmm. you know the roots, you know, set the, the 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 stage for the song though. I think it's a perfect choice to have them, you know, I mean, um, in, in the background doing their, their thing, right? And you know the music that they well the production that they do here though is is just amazing. I I love the instrumentation on this song though. I love it, right? So moody and laid back, right? But really, what makes the song work is Erica herself, right? Now. Again, this this was a this was a track that flew over my head. Um, I remember seeing the video years ago. I was like, oh look, you know, there's this Andrew Three Thousand, right? Ah, you know, because if if you remember, uh, around the time when um when you know Outcast released their second album, um, Eight mm-hmm. Aliens, uh, Andre was going through a little you know artistic phase in his life, right? You know, what I mean, he was he was more yeah. you know socially conscious, more Afrocentric, right? You know, started wearing yeah. you know. You know, in more you know, you uh, unusual garb and whatnot, right? But yeah, at the time, you know, he was dating um Erica, and you know, he eventually became uh her, you know, her, her, her baby daddy, right? So yeah, 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 right. But it's funny, like in the music video, he plays well, he plays a drug dealer, right? Because what the song is about, again, I didn't notice till years later, right? Is that Erica plays the girlfriend of a drug dealer, right? And mm-hmm. she finds herself in this like moral, you know, um. This moral, uh, how to say, boy, this 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 dilemma, this moral dilemma, right? Where basically yeah. it's like, I'm expecting my child, right? But mm-hmm. I'm worried about my man, you know what I mean? Out in the streets. Mm-hmm. And I understand mm-hmm. he has to make money. 
she says working on this way pays the bills. I understand, mm-hmm. she, she understands mm-hmm. that. But yeah. you know, if he loses a life out there, then then what? Then she has to raise his child on her own, right? Mm-hmm. But what I love about this song is how vulnerable she come, she she presents herself here, right? Because right. you know, it, it, it you know, if, if you want to, you, you you could say that you know she could leave the you know she could leave him you know for the baby, right? But mm-hmm. in her eyes, it's like you know what? He's the reason why she's gonna be a mother in the first place, right? I love how she conveys it on the pre-chorus where she says, "Um, he gave me the life that I came to live." Gave me the song mm. that I came to give. Pressure mm. on me, but the seed has grown. I can't make it on my own. Summer came mm. around and the flowers bloomed. He became the sun. I became the moon. Precious gifts that we both received. Or could this be make believe? Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. can tell that this transition to motherhood meant a lot to Badu, though. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll throw up a perfect example, right? So um, on the on the live um you know live album right when mm-hmm. she performs this track there's a moment where halfway where she sings that pre-chorus uh she breaks into tears like yeah. mid performance she breaks into tears though you know what i mean and yeah. it's just such a amazing it's just a powerful moment though such such a gut punch now but at the same time yeah. yeah you you understand why how did what what why this song means so much to her right but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I talk long enough about this. This is one of the best songs she's ever made, in my opinion, though. Just how just how emotionally um heavy this 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 track is, even though it has all this smooth, jazzy production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, such yeah, a yeah. brilliant, brilliant song. I'm Ooh. done. All right. So E, your thoughts on other side of the game. It, well, the, the the way the way that you broke it down, Matt, is was was brilliant. Um, my my <laughs> my my little thoughts on that is that first off, I felt like that song was a that song was an ode an ode to the hustler's wife. You know, um, yeah, there, yeah. There, there 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 are there there, there are plenty that there, there are plenty wives of all races um, in this in in this particular situation i think she was talking more so about you know the um her black companion her black husband her black um boyfriend you name it but i but overall like i think crossing racial lines i think that every race has some has has a situation where like she said the work ain't honest but it pays the bill like they know what's going on they know what they know what's going on and it's a thing that you know hey they okay okay do what you got to do but at the same time you got to think about how they're how she and i think those tears i think those tears came from um maybe dealing like like she how she shed tears maybe dealing with somebody who was in that light because it's, right. it's it's not it's it's not uncommon it's it's not it's, it's not it's not uncommon and not saying that it's it, it's cool but it is what it is this is real life i know i know plenty of people who deal in street activities you know what i'm saying not saying that i'm not associated with associated with it but you know but how about that um that woman who is actually with somebody and this is what's happening for whatever reason um that um to me when i you know listening back to that again i was like wow that's it that's that's like they say the other side of the game the other side of the game is that it's a lot of um it's, it's some riches that come with that and it's some great stuff that comes with that but it's a lot of harm and a lot of detrimental things that that come with that as well so um that 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 song right there is um is so powerful in so many ways because it ain't it doesn't it doesn't glorify it doesn't glorify you know doing those things it's like sometimes sometimes things happen like this but just know that we are human and we are human you know what i'm saying yeah man indeed indeed 
Yeah. All right. So next track, basically, I mean, this is an interlude, so we don't really have to talk about it, right? But what I will say, though, is this is where Badu actually does some, you know, some nice rapping, right? Uh, she actually mm-hmm. showcases her rapping skills over this. Um, this beat itself, right? Uh, well, okay. So the track is called Sometimes Mix Number Nine, mm-hmm. right? So this beat which you know i didn't even know um till recently the roots actually produced uh mm. will, will show up you know in the latter or you know i should say any any last any closing moments basically of the album right so moving forward now let's talk about next lifetime right um second longest song in the album here and um wow i mean anybody can relate to this though if you've ever been in love or you've loved someone mm-hmm. yeah you can relate to this way so here, yeah. um, Baru's, you know, being asked by a guy, literally in the opening moment, um, you know, to, to, to be his girlfriend, right? But she's like, no, I'm with someone else, right? So yeah. what does she do? Well, she makes a decision on the hook. She says, I, I guess I'll see you next lifetime. No hard feelings. I get, you know, I, I guess I'll see you next next ne- um, next lifetime. I'm going to be there, right? And I love that. That That's a really mature yeah. way of, yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of thinking yeah. about it. You know, be like, yeah, I mean, who I'm with right now, I, I, I can't say for sure if we're going to be together forever. But, you know, if it doesn't work out and you're still around, well, I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I guess it can work, right? You know, yeah. but again, you know, it's it's all written in stars, right? It's a matter of if the stars align and we happen to, to reunite, right? So, yeah, um, the beat itself yeah. is very bluesy and melancholy, in my opinion, right? But it fits in terms of what the song's narrative is about, right? And yeah, I mean, it's it's just such a great song, but but mainly because of how relatable it is, right? I mean, anybody can relate to that, right? But yeah, uh, any thoughts on next lifetime? Um, what what I what I what I put in my notes for that when I was listening to it was it 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 reminded me, um, and 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 I and pardon me for the for the shameless plug, um, when I when I heard that it's like you know because she was like and she was really letting this person know like. You know, I got a, I got a man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, and, and she was really laying it down to him. But if it, it, it reminded me of, and I guess like you know, spiritually, I might have connected with her, because, 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 because of the way that Badu and other other artists write their songs. You know, you you unknowingly like kind of connect with them in the way that that you write you know that the way that i write and it reminded me of the song um love line from um the itis album with me and my man clint taylor mm-hmm. um and i said um um the the first verse the first lines that come out i said it's amazing what you say with your eyes telling me we should leave right now he was right for you but tonight he's wrong tell the dj please replay this song it was like, it's. I think, truthfully, and 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 I and I and and and, I, and I'm the type of person that um, I believe in being committed. When I'm committed with somebody, I'm gonna be committed. Same here, same here, right? Yeah, yes, very, very much so. But at the same, but at the, but at the same time, I believe still that you can be with somebody for years and you may meet your soulmate on one night you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and and whether you act upon it who knows but that song right there like you know like it was that that was um that was uh um, ne- next i mean ne- next lifetime is almost like damn i really want to be with you and i should be with you but I'm with some, I'm, my morals would not let me go there. So you can't say that that is that she's right or wrong. It's a it's a um, it's a brilliant song. It's a brilliant it's a brilliant song in so many ways to me. All right. So next track. Well, sorry. This you know this is uh well technically it's an interlude, but it's called Afro a free uh you know free uh, it's it's yeah. it's a pretty funny interlude basically. Where mm-hmm. uh, where Badu, you know, I mean, does the Billy Holiday thing, right? She does that whole that old school blues music, but mm-hmm. um, you know, she's singing about her boyfriend's Afro, right? According to Genius, apparently she was poking for the quest love. But I, you know, I had a feeling. I had a feeling that it, that she was talking about him. I didn't yeah. know. 
Wow. But, it, but it's so it's so funny like how she sings it there, you know what I mean? Like, about you know the afro being flat on one side and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. What what yeah. I thought was really funny is you know him pretty much standing her up when he was supposed to go to a Wu Tang concert and she says, We were gonna see Wu Tang, baby. <laughs> but that's the way how she yeah, sings, sings yeah. it though, it's very classic, you know. What I mean it's very old school blues music, man. So yeah, you know, it's it, it's a skit, but I, I I love it, man. I don't know if you have anything to say on, on the skit here. Yeah, you and, and you know what, and 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 to 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 reference that, and, and and to go back to the to the sometimes, um, to go back to the sometimes, and to go back to uh, to Afro, um, um, sometimes to me, um, like I said, like you know, she has MC roots. She has MC roots. To me, she showed you like, I I've, I've been trying to tell you in my own way. I'm really a B girl. I'm a B girl. Yeah. With, with 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 Afro, listening to Afro again this morning, this is this is what I wrote. I said Afro showed people of color to be proud of their hair. Um, yeah. Yeah. To 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 be proud of hair because and 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 I said that and then I did in in um um parentheses Afro jokes. You know, I know I, I know I've seen it over the years you know being here in the states like I've seen people when they when they say so and so had an afro and then people people that don't look like us and not saying that they're bad people people that don't look like us they said you know he had he had an afro and they 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 were immediately chuckle <laughs> and and it's like it was like to me when I listened to that again it was like it 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 may, it may, it may us proud of having that hair and the styles that came with it. And then I said, also, she gave us some jazz chops and blues chops with, yes. with, 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 with this song while still referencing hip hop, hip hop by mentioning Wu-Tang, which is the same thing that you just said, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was, it was like, it was, it was like basically now, in the time that she made that record, Wu Tang, Wu Tang was was big. I know, I know. I'm a Wu Tang fan. I, yeah, I yeah, how, yeah. How, how, yeah. How big you? I mean, I mean, yeah. um, well, uh, uh, well, slight little hint of what may come. Um, this year would mark, you know, well, uh, uh, you know, a similar anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wu Tang Forever will be turning twenty five this year as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, for the, the the thing, the thing of that, like in that time, um, for her, to, for her, to, for her to mention Wu Tang, it came from like, wow, this is it. Because I know when I when I felt Wu Tang, and when you felt Wu Tang, I saw I saw Wu Tang, I saw Wu Tang, the Wu Tang Clan for free two times. What? When, they, when the, yes. I, I saw I saw Wu Tang Clan at Kamikazes in Raleigh, North Carolina, for free. They was there with uh, the alcoholics. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, I saw them. I, I, I saw I'm, I'm, I'm envying you right now. You you got oh, to see, man. You got to oh, see the alcoholics, yo. You got to see Wu Tang. Yes, 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 yes. Tash is one of my Tash is one of my um, favorite MC. J Ro. Yeah, you know, I, I always love Tasha's humor. Yeah, know, Tash, yeah, this yeah, really Tash. black sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tash is nice, man. The boys, the delivery and everything. But I'm telling you, I saw um, I saw Wu Tang for free in Raleigh, North Carolina, in in a, in a club, in a club that that held about two hundred to two hundred fifty people. Was like they're gonna get the um, the uh, fire department to come there. It was that small of a club. Um, um, I went up to the bar to get a beer, and the Jizza was standing right beside me getting a beer. I was walking out the club. Ray Kwan was sitting on a on a stool, and I told him that, "Hey, yo, dap them up, like yo, I seen y'all in uh, Atlanta, Atlanta at uh, Piedmont Park, Grant Park. Like, yeah, I seen them like early, early, early. So with 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 her with her saying what she said, it was like." She embraced, like, she embraced, like, you know what? I'm I'm going to talk about our greatness. I'm going to talk about our greatness because Wu Tang is greatness, not it, just to it, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not, not not just to us, but to the world. And Erica Badu is greatness to the world. You know what I'm saying? So, That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right. So speaking of classic, no, now we get to certainly, right? And this track in particular has the feel of an old school jazz record, right? Especially with the mm-hmm. vocal inflections from, from Badu, the sort of backup singers. I have those in quotes on the hook and just this smooth jazzy instrument, instrumentation in the background, right? Yeah. Which is funny because I actually found out, you know, you know, whilst preparing for this uh, review here, that this appeared on the soundtrack to the movie Hoodlum, right? Which, mm. if you remember, was this, um like, 20s, early 30s. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. With, with oh, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne, you know? Do, 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 yeah, but, um, uh, Bobby, John, Bobby Johnson or something like that. Yes, yes, it, it was about yeah, Bobby, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no movie, not the, not the greatest movie, but it was good, it was good. Right. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but apparently, Genius says, because I always go to Genius to read lyrics, right? This song yeah. has a double meaning, right? So on the one hand, you could see it as, well, this woman just saying that, you know, she could do f- good by herself. She doesn't need a man. And this man mm-hmm. basically is trying to, you know, get up all in a grill, basically, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And on the other hand, um, a, a, according to Badu herself, apparently, right? Um, it's talking about, well, how Africans had to change their culture the moment mm-hmm. they were brought to America as slaves, right? But I mm-hmm. love just how clever and nuanced, you know, the songwriting is. Um, but you could kind of tell us there's something kind of sinister going on, especially when she says, um, you know, slip me, uh, you, you try to slip me a uh, Mickey, you know what I mean? Uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like the guy, the guy is trying something. He's, he's trying something really dark and sinister, right? So yes. it's easy to kind of look at that. Like, okay, he, he, he's, he's, if it's a guy, he's trying something out or, oh, well, you know, Africans in, in the United States now, this is the white man, you know, in quotes, trying something with them, right? But yeah, yes. overall, great song yes. though, but the old, it's really the old-timey vibe of it that really makes the song work for me. Um, any thoughts yes. on Certainly? You know, um, with, 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 cert, with Certainly, that right there, if, 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 you, if, if you didn't know, if you didn't know, and I and I've had um, I, I got a, uh, I, I mean I guess I'm an OG as far as my age, but I have a I have OGs that's older than me, older than me. Um, he played. Um, he actually gave me a CD of uh, Erica. It's one of her albums, man. Um, definitely Dilla produced things on it, but she was like doing she was doing the scales. She was doing the scales and she was just, it was, it was amazing. But that album, that song right there, certainly, if you didn't know, if you didn't know that this woman, her voice was, and, and as, as a singer, our voices are, it's another instrument. But I think when it comes to like saying somebody's voice is an instrument, Yes, it's an instrument because it adds to the production and the recording. But then you have some people that their voices are like, wow, she sounds like a trumpet right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that song right there, going down that, going down through the list of songs, she proved that like her voice is truly an instrument. And Yes, that yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't catch all the stuff about you know the deep stuff that you're saying. I listened to it again and definitely catch it, but that was like wow, her 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 voice is like it was like it wasn't just her singing, it was like, ah, like oh my god, it's like okay, mm-hmm. yeah. it's a it's a, it's another um it's a it's it's another instrument that's serving its purpose, and that that's something that I strive for, I don't force it. I strive when it, when it's time, you know, to be that instrument. Um, Cause I want to make sounds that add to the sounds that I'm, that, that I've been given. So yeah, right. that, 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 that song showed me like, wow, she's truly an instrument for real. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. All right. So next track is for the clover, right? Um, mm-hmm. and you know, so, so sorry for all you, um, for, for you know, for the Clover fans, but um, this <laughs> is ad- admittedly for me, right? This is not one of my favorite tracks of the album, right? Um, That's simply true. because wow. I just felt like wow. the hook is used a little too much, the touch of all the wow. Clover, right? But, <laughs> but, but it is a catchy, hook, a catchy hook, sorry, yes. Um, I, I just find it just used a little too much, right? That That's just my gripe, right? Um, 
but this is just one of the most enjoyable moments more carefree moments in the album uh because for one thing it has a, a really like infectious beat though um i, I like you know for, for me this is what i noticed right um it has a sort of slight dr dre g, g- funk piano vibe mm-hmm. to the song mm-hmm. um and i know you know eventually you know dre and 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 erica will work on bag lady right but if yeah. it was the carefully those pianos it sounds very West Coast, you know what I mean, in my opinion, right? Yes, yes, but yes. I just really like how playful this song is, right? Because, yeah, ba- Badu's pretty much framing herself as someone who's, well, living her life to the fullest, right? So if you if you think you, you, you're the lucky man I'll be with her, well, you gotta try your luck at catching her, right? Hence the 40 clover, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, in other words, you will need a good luck charm to even get her and keep her, right? Because, yeah, she mm-hmm. is, she's on a roll right now, right? But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a fun track, just, just not one of my favorites on this album here, right? Uh, but I do appreciate the, you know, the, the lightheartedness of this song here as a whole, right? Uh, any thoughts on Folly Flover? Matt, Matt, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, um, and, and and let me say this, I think that, um, I think that um, this, this is the second time that we've actually sat down and we did this thing, you know? Yeah. And I think that we're kind of like fucking naturals, man. But I'm, I'm, I'm being biased. I'm being biased. I'm being biased because it's us. But truthfully, like real talk, like I actually, um, I literally, and I and I was seeing, I was seeing you these, um, the screenshot. Like I actually, like I say, I I went back through. I I have a busy, busy life, but I went back through every song. And, and I wrote notes. I wrote notes on everything. So it's not a thing of, you know, a rubber stamp where I'm just a, a green. But look. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But look, but look, this is this is what I said. Like honestly, I I don't even I don't even remember four leaf clover. And to be honest, wow. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, and no diss, no diss. Like I I the, the songs that I grab, the way that I consume music is different, you know. Um, like I said, it's just, it's like, I've heard every Nas album, you know, I've heard me, me, me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't sit here and say that I sit down and I consume it and the people that I rock with, shout out MRKSX, Wizards Beast, um, DJ 110, everybody that feeling and stuff. People listen to music a different way. I listen to music the way that I listen to, it. but this is what, this is, this is exactly what I wrote down for Four Leaf Clover. I said Four Leaf Clover gave that feel of the swing sound of that day. Of that day. Oh, that it, okay, okay, okay. That 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 that, that it was about. Mm. Look, but look, almost like a stretch, but something cool to vibe to. I did not I did not not that dissing it, but hearing that song, it was like. You have um, you have uh, a lot of like um, because I because like I said earlier, she did something old yet new. You know, with 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 with, with what she was doing because she combined it with with hip hop, and it wasn't like it was it was nothing new. The bounce was different, but this song this song right here was almost like, well, you know, we need to, we need to put that song. Um, that's like the vibe of today. And yeah, said, yeah, it actually has yeah, a, a it, radio it, yeah, song. It, it, yeah, it has, it has a radio song vibe today. If you really think about yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it didn't. And 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 not knocking that because, like I say, I mean, she she may love it, but it it was like, and and man, this is amazing because like when I listened to it, it naturally, I was like, man, like, like. Wow, like, and 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 I don't want to put no artists in no box because I don't want to be be put in a box. Like, I have to do this type of music, but it was like, nah, this ain't it right here. <laughs> this ain't it, you know. So yeah, Four Leaf Clover was like, um, it wasn't lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but better luck next time, right? Better luck, yeah, better luck, better luck, um, next time, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so track number ten, we have no love, right? Um. This is, well, just basically her calling her ex out on, well, you know, because she's giving him love, but she just, sorry, but he's not giving her love back, right? Um, yeah. I love, like, on the, <clears throat> sorry, on the second verse where she talks about when they first met, um, she could hardly see, and now she's blind and she wishes she knew 
Sorry, she wishes he knew how to rescue her from that darkness, right? Um, yeah. The soulful piano lace beat is a delight from start to end. Um, it gives the song this really nocturnal, kind of, you know, driving late at night kind of vibe to it, though. Mm-hmm. And for me, though, I, I felt that Erica killed it on this track, though, um, lyrically, right? Yes. Um, yes it, it's yes, really yes. one of those songs that you forget is on the album, though, but um, yeah, I think, I think No Love is, is really solid, man. Um, yes, any thoughts yes, on No Love? Too. Me too. Um, what wh- what I loved about that song was um, Erica had a chance to sh- to show because they they know they they knew Erica off top like. They they knew that the be- the the very beginning of the song, she showed you. Oh, I got I have a low range too. I got a low range. Mm. Let me let me let me show you my low range. And then at the same time, this and, and from listening to that record, she showed you like, okay, I'm gonna show you my low range. I'm gonna show you my low range. And, and when you go back and listen to it, you'll hear that. She it's low. It's low. Right, right. It's low. She she does a low, a low um. A low octave, a low, a low um, range in that song. But another thing about that that song is that she shows you like, let me show you how to let a song breathe. I'm a, I'm a pop in, and and I'm gonna let that that production ride, and then and then I'm gonna pop back in. There. I'm gonna show you how to let production breathe. That's what mm. that's what that's that's what I got from that song. That's what I got from that. Song. That was um. To me, that was a um, that was a standout in my eyes that uh, of, of a song that I would go back to because of how she did that, and I and I felt like she did that um, purposely, you know, the right way, you know, yeah. So I loved her range in that. I love her right. range. In that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next track is drama, drama right? Um, mm-hmm. This is a really heartfelt, um, soul-infused track where uh, Badu is pretty much getting socially conscious, right? Um, mm-hmm. On, you know, the state of modern times, right? All the hardships we deal with and, you know, even calling on the people who act as, act as if everything's okay, right? Um, yeah. You know, as she says, fantasy people, make-believe people, how can you go on but you're still living, right? Uh, but, mm-hmm. you know, she encourages, you know, listeners to wisen up and, you know, teach the next generation wisdom and whatnot, right? So, yeah, similar to on and on. This is her, you know, dropping you know jewels as well, right? And um, yeah, for me, yeah, this this track is great, though. It's really one of the more soulful tracks on the album. Um, any thoughts mm-hmm. on drama? With with drama, for me, that was that was the um um a early, like say ninety we said nineteen ninety seven when she released that. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, that was like okay, I'm gonna show you a dope singing freestyle. Now think about that. It's 1997. I'm a, to me, it sounded like it was freestyle. And it it helped to solidify that she has a cadence, a cadence and knowing how to be in the pocket properly like no other. That's that's what I got from that song. You know, I know how I know I know how to ride this beat properly mm. and and um and do what 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 and and sing with it and sing with it and sing because at that time you know anybody was freestyling it was it was more so rapping you know what i'm saying so she's an mc she she was an mc first and she and she actually can sing too she's a gift yeah she's a gift she's a, she's a gift to all of us <laughs> she is she is right yeah she's a gift to all of us straight up yeah all right, so three more yeah. tracks ago, right? We have Sometimes. This is actually the full version of Sometimes, not the mix number nine interlude thingy that appeared before, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really do love the beat for this, though. And, you know, she actually does, you know, this yeah, yo, yeah, yo uh-huh. intro, right? Uh-huh. Which I remember she did on um, the live album, right? I think she has a song on it called Yeah, Yo, right? Um, yeah. But basically on this this song here, Sometimes, um, well, by the way, production is handled by The Roots, right? Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. 
Right. So mm-hmm. Badu is speaking about singing about, you know, just feeling, you know, disappointed in this relationship, right? Not getting yeah. any pleasure from a partner. And, you know, she just really asks. She just constantly asks to herself, where did the love go, right? Um, but yeah. I just love how smooth this beat is. Just how silky yes. smooth this beat is. I know there's a sample in it that, for the life of me, I can't remember where it's from, but I've heard that sample before, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, you could just kind of bask in the smooth, just kick back and just... Mm-hmm. You know, just, just, just vibed it right, and I mean, Badu just glides over this beat so effort, effortlessly with her, with her voice, right? So yeah, yeah, dope, dope track. Love this track. Um, any yeah. thoughts on sometimes? Yeah, I, I mean, when when she asked, you know, um, where did the love go? What where, where did the love go? Where did the love go? Like from a from a um from a songwriter's perspective. I know I definitely written about where did the love go, but from a a, a regular um, listener, a uh, regular human being, it's like they all can attest to that. Where 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 did the love go? Where did the love go? And and the way that she says that in that, the thing that stuck out with me on sometimes was she made she made me feel like with her um ooh, her her ooh, ooh child references right with, right right but she made me feel right there she reminded me of my cousin um mary 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 givens who who lives in um, california love you mary um she she reminded me of her as a little girl erica as a little girl sitting around her older aunties instead of and in, in, instead of like you know being around like other kids her age, she was around her her, her aunties who were saying like, "Ooh, child, ooh, I'm scared of you. I'm scared all that stuff." Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and 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 my cousin, my cousin Mary, I remember her being that kid who was around there. Uh, I mean, shout out, man, shout. Out, I'm sorry, shout out, Papa, Big Mama, um, Bruinton family, Smith family, all our times and stuff, man. But I remember her coming down. And um, in North Carolina, she was she was from Durham. You know, I'm from Zebulon, North Carolina. And we was in Raleigh Hill, North Carolina. But we had our when when we doing our family thing, and I remember her being around the grown ups when they was talking, and the kids was like running around because we got a huge family. But yeah, that that song reminded me of like she was to me. It seemed like she was around her aunties, and they were saying when they said that. Ooh, child! All that, how she said that, I was like, mm. "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." That's that's what I got from that. Right, right, right. So, um, I, I have to confess something here, right? Mm-hmm. As 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 much as I enjoy, certainly, mm-hmm. I think that flipped it. This is the the remix to certainly is my favorite. Of the I I, I love. Love, better. love this beat. It's it's less jazzy, but it's more soulful. Um, I I would make the argument it's a much better beat than the original. Um, the sample is from, of course, Cool and the Gang, um, Summer Madness, right? I mean, yeah, it is one yeah. of the most recognizable samples in mm-hmm. music, right? I mean, look at mm-hmm. look at Rocky the movie, look at Will Smith Summertime, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I just love how the beat has this this sunny breezy vibe to it, though. And just the way yeah. how Badu sings and this is excellent though, because this matches the vibe of the beat. I know it could have just been easily her just uh, redoing the same vocal style that she did in the original track. But it's like, no, I'm, 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 I'm fitting with this this breezy vibe yeah. here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and there's a moment between the end of the chorus and the second verse where you hear this do 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 keyboards though. I mm. love that bit though. You know what I mean? It it just yeah. sets this mood though. You know what I mean? Um, even the, the closing moments of the song with the with the ad libs, which are repeated, and then you slip me a Mickey. I mean, it sounds dope, right? I mean, yes, yes. it's a dark moment, but you know, it just sounds dope on the track, right? But yes. yeah, love, 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 love this remix. Um, and you thought on certainly flipped it. Did you think that she flipped it very well? I think I, I, I certainly, um, uh, honestly, like and, and going back through because I'm going back through and listening again. I was reminded like oh because it was like because you can see it says certainly um uh, uh, a reflip or whatever and I'm like this is it and then and and actually what I did when I heard when I heard it 
the, the, the whole cool in the game thing. I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I wish there was a way that you could you could sing it vocally, but it's hard though. It's it's really hard, but it's just such it, a great yeah, like yeah, mood it, setter, you know. Yeah, when I when when I heard it, I was like, I know that. And when I was writing in my notes and stuff, I was like, okay, I want to make sure that that I say the right thing. I'm like, okay, I don't want to say no Bob James Nautilus or this and that. So 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 I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I made sure I knew what it was, but mm. it, man, it, man, it was it was two o'clock in the morning, and my mind is still trying to wake up. And I was like, okay, oh, that's right, cool in the game, but that 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 right there. I mean, it's it's kind of like in a way where you have certain people who who utilize like you have certain samples that have been used a billion times. Cool, who used it the best? And that right there, I felt like it was used. It 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 was it was used. It was used properly. It was used properly. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I I like I like what 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 was what was done with it. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say that that it's gonna. If 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 you ask me that and on and on or uh, next lifetime. I'm 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 choosing on and on the next lifetime, but that song right there is like a that song right there for you and I as music listeners, real music listeners, we know and we can enjoy. It. For a very very new listener, they will listen to it, and be like, "Oh my god, oh my god, can I can I believe this?" And they and they will enjoy a certain way even better than what we enjoy it as, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, understand. All right, and now we wrap up with well, Rimshot Ultra, right? Um, mm-hmm. the, essentially, it's a longer version of the Rimshot intro, right? And and for me, it's just being able to hear that delightful beat and hook over. You know, I mean, it's it's just the credits rolling, you know, scrolling up the screen moment though. But let's hear that song just just play out to the very end. Um, it's just joy, in my opinion, just pure joy, right? So, yeah. have a great way to end the album off. Um, <laughs> if you have anything to weigh on, yeah, the, the yeah. outro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's like um, it's a it's it's a it's it's like a blueprint of like this is how and and think about that. Think about that. Like people have been making albums for for years, but this is um when you when you go from when you go to ninety seven and to now, it's like you have even though it's always been that way. You have young consumers who are like a little more savvy when it comes to listening to albums, you know, the, you know, um, and, and trust me, I'm still growing as a listener. I mm. know what I like. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know what I like. Um, I know what I like, but you have people who listen to albums a certain way. And once you start, like you know, and that's a be- that's a beautiful thing about being a music listener and growing and growing. You appreciate music a certain way. I can I can remember hearing um, I can remember hearing, and, and 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 this is coming from a person who doesn't, you know, you know, it it, it wasn't until like a few years ago. Well, I'm gonna listen to the album. And I'm gonna let it soak in, and I'm gonna listen to it again. I'm soaking like I was always like, yeah, man, I, I listened to it one time. I I can tell you what I feel about it, you know that type of thing. But growing up in, in in music, I remember hearing um um uh, can't can't change me by um Chris Cornell. I was um laying on I was laying on the couch when I was with my ex wife, mm-hmm. and I and um the video came and I was like like knocked out. I was asleep. And the song came on Can't Change Me by Chris Cornell. And it woke me up. It woke me up like, who, what, what's that? What's that? And I, I watched the video the next day. I went out and I got the tape. And um Chris Cornell's um you Euphoria Morning. If you if you never heard it, do yourself a favor and get that. Chris Cornell was uh one of the singers from um uh, I think Soundgarden. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And so in saying that with with, with Erica, um, 
she she has left an imprint that she's left an imprint that's so it's like a Bigfoot, like the Bigfoot imprint that it starts. It it was people before Erica, but it starts with Erica. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. 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 It starts. It's, 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 it start. It starts with Erica, and I think I think it starts with Erica in a in that extends in the way because because of her um, hip hop roots. Man, don't 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 get me started again. Hip hop, hip hop, hip hop is the only music that you can put any type of genre of music and make hip hop. And here we and here, here we go. We have Erica, we have Erica Badu, and we're discussing Baduism. Me and Matt. Yeah, yeah that that's that's all it is. Straight, straight up, straight up, up. Yeah. Straight up, straight up, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> straight up, straight oh, up. Boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like, 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 li- literally, like, um, I'm gonna, um, this this week is gonna be uh, uh, going back down the Erica rabbit hole. Like, you, you did it, Matt. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you. Oh, yo, yo, you you're for, welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. T- t- thank, thank you. Thank you for hey, thank you for sending me down that hole again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. um, so it's so closing, right? Um. I, I, I do think that this album still holds up, though. I consider it a masterpiece of not just R&B, not just R- um, 90s R&B music, yes. but um, New Soul as well, right? You know, this was one yes, of the... Yes. She was an artist who pretty much introduced me to the world of New Soul. Um, I would learn about the Soul Quarians as a result of that. So, you know, I... I, I well, I know, I'm now mentioning this, actually. I saw all the roots thanks to her, right? So, um, mm, mm, like, mm. still to this, the, well, my, my introduction came in the form of Illadelph Half Life, right? Which they dropped in 96. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still to oh, me, yeah. the best roots album they've ever made, in my opinion. But yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's pretty much been this rabbit hole where you're just seeing these, these, these artists who are just, you know, just taking, you know, soul and jazz music but presenting it in a unique way, but you know, it, it feels authentic. It feels contemporary. You know what I mean? So yes, yeah, yes, yes. I mean, yes. thanks to Erica Badu, I wouldn't have known about the roots or yes. uh, D'Angelo or Maxwell or, 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 um, ah. or common, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have known about those individuals if it wasn't for her. Right. But yeah, yes. for me, um, this, this was the album that this was the, my, my, this was the first album I listened to from her. Um, I don't really remember the others all that well because I've listened to them like ages ago, but this one in particular, all, I always go back to. Um, even the live album as well, too, I always go back to it ever so often, right? Because I just love yeah. how real she was um, um, on well on stage. There. And then also, too, yeah. um, you know, her, her singing Tyrone for the first time, right? I love Tyrone, right? But yeah. Yeah, oh, I, man. I love that song. I love that song, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah, for, for, for me, I'm going to give this a light four and a half out of five, man. I, I think that this album still holds up. I think that this is still a bonafide classic. Uh, if, if you haven't checked it out, um, please, please do. You know what I mean? Um, and I mean, you, you will get a lot out of this too, whether it's, you know, jazz or soul or, you know, um, neo versions of both, right? And a little bit of hip hop here there as well, right? So. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, this 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 album still holds up to me though. Yeah, by all means. I mean, if you haven't checked it out in a long while, please do. It still holds up, right? Uh, yes. Final words and reason. Um, I would I would say the same thing. Um, I would say the same thing. You said what? Four? You said four and a half? Yeah, li- um, liked four and a half out of five. Like yeah, like 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 for like four like four and a half. Um, very very. It's it's a it's a great, great 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 pro- project. Um, what I what I would say is that listening to this album, especially in that time, 1997, there was a lot of great music, um, a lot of great music going on in 1997. Listening yes, to it the, was, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Changing Faces, you name it. Um, R. Kelly, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, but, I mean, back then he was put out hits. He was put out hits. Oh, so, oh yeah, incredible, yeah, incredible, incredible, incredible. Aaliyah, um, the thing with this album right here that can, like, for me, can tip it to a five is the is the fact that um, organically, organically, 
whether it was her, and I think she had a lot to do with it, and whoever was um, helping her career, somebody chose to go organically somewhere else. And not only did it work, it, it, it was real. It felt real. It, it was real because you seen what happened going going forward. You know, going forward, you know, she's not that um she's not that typical artist who's gonna do the typical thing. Uh with the with the exception of the that that one record, the one I can't think of the name. I was sometime the, the record that we said that it was um it didn't it didn't really oh, that, that, that that's that's fully clover. Yeah, for fully clover. That uh, with with the exception of that, it was like somebody came in there like, hey, 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 we need to do a record like this because this is the <laughs> thing right now. This is the thing because they're really. I was in a club and they put it on. They put <laughs> they put it on the album and <laughs> and and I've never met Matthew. He's never met East Mitty, and both of us. Um, said the same thing, like yeah, like I, like look at that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 trust me, like you 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 are a expert critic. I'm just a, a artist who likes what I like, and I, yeah. and I was like, and I said that that song to me was cool for the vibe of the moment to me, but to me it was a stretch from what from what I was hearing. So. Yeah, um in, in 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 closing, man, um in closing, yeah. Uh, Erica Badu is a um Erica Badu is truly a jewel. She 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 is a jewel in um in 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 so many ways. And it and it was something else that we that you were saying that I want I wanted to elaborate on. I, I can't remember, I cannot remember, I cannot remember, but she she she's a jewel man um yeah she's a jewel she's a jewel um she's a jewel she she's she's a true one she's a she's legend a, she's a legend yeah yeah she yeah one of one man one of one and um and i'm and i'm happy that um that 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 you had me here to to discuss this because i was stressed. of course yeah i was i was stre i was stressing about it because like i said the, the way that i consume music I don't consume it the same way, but I be hearing stuff, and but I know how I, but I know how to listen to music and like boom, boom, boom. And the majority of the albums like, oh, okay, okay, okay. But some of the songs are like, oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, she's a um, she's a jewel, man. Thank you, thank you, Matt. Ah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, so man. before we part ways, uh, you know, you can just let the rest of the world know where you can be found online and your music. Uh, man, um, you can find me on Instagram at um, e.smitty, that's e dot S-M-I-T-T-Y, the number one, e.smitty1 at um, Instagram. Uh, you can find me at um, e, e, e smitty on Facebook, um, anything e smitty. It's, an, it's, it's another e smitty out there, but he's e smitty. And I'm and I'm and I'm East Smitty, and I'm proud to be that Imps, that East Smitty. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man. And, and oh, shout out, shout out to my groups that I'm I'm a part of. Shout out the Soul Power, shout to Beat Yoda. Yeah, shout out Itis. That's I T I S, and that's I'm another. Itis, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another artist out there too. It's, it's like a rock band, but that's my man Clint Taylor, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Everybody just they're just trying to you know trying to get on the way, man. But yeah, man. Um, if you want to hear some real heartfelt, real music, rock rock with that. You know, I appreciate y'all in advance. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Well, shout, like, out, shout out that feeling. Shout out that feeling. Shout yes, out that. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out yeah, that yeah, feeling. Yeah. By the way. Um, in my case, now, well, you know, in the description to this uh, podcast here, you will find a link to your link. So when you go there, you will find my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. On the Facebook page itself, you will find excerpts from, you know, um, BBB Radio, which I do with uh, my friend, uh, Rakat Medina. Um, also, episodes of Retrospect Reviews, like what you're listening to here right now. So, yeah, uh, again, E, thank you so much for, for, for coming through. It was great talking about this classic album. Got a lot of fun talking about it, and 
yeah, we, you see, I have, a, I have a feeling that they'll hold up uh, 25 years later, you know what I mean? I'm looking forward to um, everything that you have coming. And honestly, after 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 this second situation, man, um, I think I think that the um, I think that the chemistry is. I think I think the, I think the chemistry is real, man. And uh, like I say, this is what you do. And hey, if, if, if you need me for anything or you want me for anything else, Man, let's get up here and talk. Let's get up here and talk about that. I'm not. I'm not the movie guy. I, I love movies. <laughs> I love movies. I love movies, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Like, I, I can't break it down like that. But you know, we can. We can break down music, man. I like. I. I would love. I don't know if you know about. Do you know about um Jim Croce? No, I don't. Jim Cro. Jim Croce did uh, Bad Boy, Leroy Brown, um, Time in a Bottle. I, I, I see I see his greatest hits, man. But certain things, man, that I would love to discuss, and I would love to. And I'm saying I'm saying on on video on video and on audio, like I would love um, to discuss um, Amy Winehouse um, back in black. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna put yeah. that out there. I'm gonna put that out. There. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would I would love I would love and and and. and and I'm saying that, and I'm being I'm being biased because that like that song, the album like change, and the miseducation of Lauryn Hill. I would I would love to um, discuss that as well. Sure. Oh yeah, 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 for 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 for, for sure, man. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you know we, we we should wait on like the actual you know 25th or 30th or whatever. But you nah. know, if if the anniversary does come around, then, I mean, you sound like you're eager to talk about those albums anyway. Then yeah, yeah I mean, why why not? Yeah. Like why why not talk about them? Right? We we should have to wait. Yeah. It's a few more years until it turns. No, man. I may, I may, I may, I may be out of here. I may be out of here. Like, like, like the song, like the song on my uh, solo album. Yeah, you, you, you. Uh, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. I may be out of here. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much, Matt, for having me up here, man. For real. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. This is this is my first doing some. Like this, um, talking about album. Like this is this is man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this this is fun. It's just us talking about albums. That's that's really it. That's yeah. too complicated, right? But yeah, I'm 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 glad that you had fun. And yeah, we we will definitely um, link back up as we see in trailer. We will definitely link back up and talk about yeah. talk about more more um, you know classic albums. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. So once again, guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever you listen is. This was Manji Bailey and Ismiti. Thanks once again for coming through. Thank you. Thank you. And we are saying off from another episode of Retrospect Reviews. So until the next one, take care, stay safe in and out. Peace. Peace.